We have a budget tomorrow, Mr Speaker, where it's briefed that tough choices will be impacting on families across Britain. Does he accept that every pound hidden in tax havens is a pound loss from the pockets of working families? Well, can I thank the Honourable Lady? I mean, I, look, we want people to come to this country to create the jobs uh, and to generate the tax revenue. Uh, whether it's non dom status, which was stricter under this government given the changes we made than under the last Labour government. Uh, whether it's the Prime Minister's approach to big tech companies, uh, where he's led the charge uh, with the G presidency in making sure there's an international approach uh, and delivering uh, global minimum corporate tax rules. We have lowered the tax gap, the difference between the tax owed and the tax uh, raised, to uh, the lowest level, certainly lower than under the last Labour government, and will continue to do so. There are 38 countries in the OC, uh, OECD two-year growth league table. Where does the UK rank in that table? Deputy yeah. Prime Minister. Thank her. She, she'll know that on the latest data, unemployment remains at a 50-year low. Yeah. Well, she's say, the, the, the Shadows Chancellor is saying it's gone up. It's half the level left by the last Labour government. But I'll answer the question for the Deputy Prime Minister. The answer is 38 out of 38 on growth. If there was a World Cup for growth, we wouldn't even qualify. Working people are paying the price for 12 years of Tory failure. The wrong choices by the wrong people. Now, after days of dodging and denial, this morning the Deputy Prime Minister finally acknowledged formal complaints about his misconduct. But his letter contains no hint of admission or apology. This is anti-bullying. This this is anti-bullying week. Will he apologise? Deputy Prime Minister. Can I thank the right honourable lady? Look, in terms of the economic challenges which are global, caused by COVID and the war in Ukraine, we've got a plan to grip inflation, balance the books, and drive economic growth. If we listen to the honourable lady, debt would go up, unemployment would go up, and working Britons would pay the price. She asked. She asked. She asked about uh, the complaints. I received notification this morning. I immediately asked the Prime Minister to set up an independent uh, inquiry into them. I'm confident I behave professionally throughout, but of course I will engage thoroughly and look forward, Mr Speaker, may I say, look forward to transparently addressing any claims that have been made. Angela Rayner. So, Mr Speaker, let me get this straight. He has had to demand an investigation into himself because the Prime Minister is too weak to get a grip. A Prime Minister in office less than a month with a disgraced Cabinet Minister resigned with his good wishes, the Home Secretary who breached the ministerial code and risked national security still clings on, and now the Prime Minister defends his deputy whose behaviour has been described as abrasive, controlling and demeaning. With junior staff, Mr Speaker, too scared to even enter his office. And that's without mentioning the flying tomatoes. The Deputy Prime Minister knows his behaviour is unacceptable. So what's he still doing here? Deputy Prime Minister. Mr Speaker, I'm here and happy to address any specific point she wishes to make. Uh, the, the, well, that never happened, uh, she says from a sedentary position, and I uh, will thoroughly rebut and refute any of the claims that have been made. Thank you, Mr Speaker. Maybe he just doesn't think there's a problem, or maybe he's suggesting that civil servants are liars. Now he's reportedly banned from meeting junior staff without supervision. While we await an inquiry the Prime Minister hasn't even instigated from a watchdog he hasn't even appointed. In the Prime Minister's letter, he did not say how and when this will be investigated or by who. No ethics, no integrity and no mandate, and still no ethics adviser. So when will they appoint an independent ethics adviser and drain the swamp?